You. So, uh, one question I'd like to ask, um, you mentioned the problems recently of pure inflation targeting experienced by other central banks, I'm thinking particularly in, in, uh, uh, in terms of the Bank of England. Uh, do you feel that the Bank of Japan's uh, policies have been vindicated to some extent by the experience of other central banks over the last uh, couple of years? And when you're in discussions with your colleagues in other countries, um, what kind of advice do you give to them for their future handling of their currency? First of all, uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, inflation targeting, Sabang uh, Japan uh, is a poor run. Uh, it's a poor the sense. The, in the 1980s, the, we experienced a uh, bubble economy. One of the reasons why bubble was created is that Sabang uh, Japan maintained very low interest rate for a prolonged period. And uh, in retrospect, people wonder why Bank of Japan maintained uh, such a low interest rate for such a long period. But in those days, <coughs> the, the, when Bank of Japan tried to increase short-term interest rate, we are faced with a lot of criticism uh, saying, that <coughs> why do you care about inflation? There's no sign of inflation. Actually, their criticism was, <coughs> their observation itself was right. The, our inflation rate was almost at uh, zero. At the same time, uh, we expect great boom. We are experiencing a huge increase in asset prices. Uh, in in the in retrospect, the subdued inflation rate is a major deterrent to raising short-term interest. And uh, this time around, the the advanced economies experience uh, the global uh, credit bubble. And one of the reason, one of the reason is. Uh, central bank uh, continue to maintain very interest rate. And uh, there are several reasons for that. I'm not saying that if, uh, the low subdued inflation rate is the uh, sole reason. But intellectually speaking, intellectually, the subdued inflation rate is a source, the reason why the, such a uh, accommodative metal policy maintain for long period. And uh, the lesson. Uh, the, the lesson is we have to uh, make every effort to identify the financial imbalances accumulated in the economy. The financial imbalances uh, can take several forms, such as increase in, in the asset prices, increase in the, the credit and leverage, and increase in maturity mismatch. And uh, if all these signs show the same direction, then uh, central bank have to think about uh, raising short-term interest rate, even though they are not experiencing outright inflation. And, so that that. and actually, the, our current monetary policy framework uh, does include these components. Uh, we have two pillar approach. As a first pillar, yeah, we are checking the long-term uh, protection of the economy. As a second pillar, we are checking where we are experiencing financial imbalance. And so, in that sense, the other framework of monetary policy is uh, the modernized version, or sufficient version of uh, uh, inflation time. We are uh, running off time. Anthony, I've already asked a question. I think uh, our colleague, please, behind, and we will close uh, this session after that uh, last question. I think we, <coughs> excuse me, John Smith, I'd like to be back up in London. I think the um, BOJ's purchase of risk assets, BOJ uh, REITs and corporate bonds in October, was a very innovative step, uh, maybe even in the world, perhaps, innovative. Um, I think there were widely different reactions from private sector economists. Some said this is the amounts are grossly inadequate to affect the value of those assets in the market. And others said um, the idea is to change the psychology of the markets. Um, I, I'd like to hear um, 
your opinion between, well, I can only guess what it might be between those two views. Secondly, as this is such um, a new field for the BOJ to enter, uh, I wonder if you have considered at all what you might do next in this area. You have very clear guidelines for JGB purchases. Um, are you going to continue with this risk asset purchasing program? And if so, do you have any, any beginning to think of how far you might go in this particular field? Charlie, you have three questions. You have to three answers. Uh, I would like to uh, frame uh, my answer to your question <laughs> in two. <laughs> uh, the first is on uh, our purchase of wheat and copper from etc. The, as you know, uh, Japanese financial system is a uh, uh, bank centric system, uh, which is different from that of the United States. And uh, when we started to discuss uh, how we can generate better policy <coughs> easing effect. Uh, the trouble, or the, the difficulty with which we are faced is the, the, the appropriate, uh, suitable financial asset are lucky. Uh, for instance, the size of weed uh, is quite small. The size of uh, ETF is uh, quite small. And uh, uh, in that sense, and the sheer size of our purchase is not a solution. And the, we wanted that uh, we wanted uh, our purchase uh, could work as a kind of catalyst uh, uh, for changing the behavior of market participants. In, in that regard, the, the our decision is somewhat related with psychology, which you mentioned. And uh, uh, after we implemented, and the, we are observing good upside in this uh, market. As for the future, uh, everything depends on the, the course of economy. And uh, uh, as I said in my speech, uh, economy is now uh, <coughs> exiting from uh, temporary pause of the economy, and we are now observing good sign. Uh, so uh, if, uh, if the economy deviates materially from our projection, then the additional purchase uh, could be uh, conceivable. Uh, but uh, the decision should be weighed on the basis of uh, objective analysis of uh, benefit and the cost. Uh, this is very uh, the, the innovative measure. And this is uh, entering into the area of uh, quasi-fiscal uh, policy. When we started uh, uh, this operation, we discussed whether central bank should embark on this type of operation. In the democratic society, uh, it should be a government that, uh, uh, that take the policy uh, with the uh, element of uh, fiscal policy. At the same time, central bank is very flexible. And given the weakness of the economy, uh, there is some ground for central bank to embark on this type of operation. Uh, therefore, <laughs> the, so, uh, this choice was very uh, difficult. Now. But after all sorts, we decided on, uh, uh, on starting this operation. So coming back to your question, it depends on and the our assessment of uh, future economic activity and and or uh, assessment of uh, uh, cost and benefit. I think Mr. Shirakawa has given us uh, 20 minutes more of his time than what was allocated to us. Uh, Anthony, uh, if you have a really short question, you don't mind, Governor, and, and Governor will answer also in a very short way, and then that will be. Thank you very much. Governor, I was present in Washington last October when you made a very interesting speech at the Ronald Reagan Center, and you said, among other things I quote, if foreign countries mistakenly draw the lesson from Japan's experience as being 
a need for short-term stimulative pol policy measures, they will be writing the wrong prescription. So my question is, do you think the US Federal Reserve is writing, is writing the wrong prescription now with its QE? And in that case, is the patient, i.e. the US economy, not going to recover? In Basel, uh, the central bank governor uh, get together every two months, and uh, we are exchanging uh, our views very candidly. And uh, uh, I think uh, each central bank is making every effort to return uh, its own economy to non-inflationary growth path. And I think uh, the Ben Bernanke or Federal Reserve effort. Uh, I'm hoping that the Bananke effort will make will make fruit. Thank you. Thank you very very much, Mr. Shirakawa, for coming today. And uh, I want to offer you a one year honorary membership to our club. And please come before uh, uh, that honorary membership expires. And thank you very much for coming. Today. Keep sitting until our guest has left the room. Marco is lifted.